In the previous episode, Sally and I were getting ready to go and have a look at the wire aqueduct and then walk into Garstang for a mooch around. We're just setting off to look at the aqueduct and then we're going to go into town. I'm Alan, I own a 45 foot narrowboat, have an interest in industrial heritage, transport and technology and invite you to join me as I cruise, repair and maintain my boat and visit events and places of historic interest. You think little Reggie might have a poorly leg? He's not wanting to walk at the moment. Walking back to the boat, let's see what happens. Come on, Reg, back to the boat. So you're going too far for you today. Oh, he's limping. Yeah. He's definitely limping. I thought it was his left, but now I'm wondering if it's his right. We're setting off again without Reggie. He's got a poorly foot. He wouldn't be able to walk along with us at the pace we want to go. And it's best that he rests up really. It is a hot day. He's got a nice cooling mat in the boat. <laughs> that and a should help him. Jacket. Cooling jacket as well. He's a very lucky dog. He's very well looked after, I have to say. Very well looked <laughs> Better after. Better than you. <laughs> Better than me. <laughs> We're coming up to the wire aqueducts now. This crosses the river wire. We're gonna pop down and have a look at it. Let's see what we see over the wall. sign on the other side says a single span aqueduct 110 feet long carrying the canal 34 feet above the river wire engineer John Rennie first used 1797 there's another sign here which says John Rennie designed this single span aqueduct built in 1797 and it carries the Lancaster to Kendall Canal 34 feet above the river wire. You have to watch your footing here. The aqueduct is made of sandstone blocks set in bands which alternate between being rock-faced and furrowed and has a single elliptical arch. It has been Grade 2 listed since 1967. <laughs> we were going to walk along the river but we've changed our minds now so <laughs> We're going to go back across the aqueduct. John Rennie also designed the Loon Aqueduct that carries the canal over the River Loon on the eastern side of the city of Lancaster, which we will visit in a later episode.
we're just walking into the centre now looking forward to what we might find <laughs> never been here before so it's all new I have seen it on other vloggers but it doesn't mean the same does it when you watch someone else's video Garstang is an ancient market town within the Wire Borough of Lancashire. It is midway between the cities of Lancaster in the north and Preston in the south, each being roughly 10 miles distant. It has a population of about 5,000. A good shot? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like you. Oh. Why did things get in the way, look? We're just resting up. <laughs> Had a lovely walk around the town. And now we're going to pop into the, what do you call it? Towed Tithe Barn? Towed Tithe Barn. All will become clear <laughs> when we get there. <laughs> Dating back as early as 1710, the pub was originally a post-medieval tithe barn for storing grain and corn. Cheers. Cheers. Nice for you. <laughs> it's a beautiful spot here, isn't it? Absolutely. Really, very nice. There's a boat here called Pumpkin. <laughs> I like that one over there, Je t'aime. Je t'aime. Yeah. Okay. I popped a button on my shorts yesterday, just as we were about to set off from the marina. And we just found a wonderful little shop in Garstang, where we've been able to buy some replacement buttons. I only need one, but I'll have some spares. Uh, needles and thread. So you've got a bit of a job on later. <laughs> These have just arrived. What are they, salt and pepper chips? Yep. Salt and pepper chips, is that what they're called? Salt chips, yeah. Mm. Oh, quite nice. Oh, isn't it lovely being able to do this in the weather? Lovely Very weather. lucky with the weather. Oh, my God, delicious. We're just walking back across the wire aqueduct. Take another look across there. Not many people playing golf today. There are some <laughs> in the far distance. Mm. Plenty of big fish in there, you know. Go across over and cover your side. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll give me a piggyback, I'll cross. <laughs> Have you got the keys ready?
We're just leaving Garstang. We're planning to travel quite a few miles this afternoon, but it is very hot in the sun. We actually traveled a distance of about seven miles. We did enjoy our walk around the village or the town and our quick half a pint each <laughs> at the old tithe barn or inn or whatever it's called. What was it called? <laughs> The old, the old, the old I tithe the H, barn. I yeah. H, didn't I? Sally dropped the H earlier. She was saying told, but it should have been told. That was a bit old. <laughs> anyway, it is a beautiful afternoon. Say hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> So it'll be interesting to see what uh, we find as we head northwards on the Lancaster Canal, no less. We're just going across the wire aqueduct now. I wouldn't say we've seen a lot of boats coming through here, but that was a busy interlude. I'm not filming all the boats that I pass, of course. It's very different on this canal. They are well spaced out. I can see three bridges ahead of me. I don't think I've mentioned that on average, there is a bridge about every quarter of a mile. Quite unbelievable. They number up into the hundreds. The bridge ahead of me has got FWB 1927 on it. I'm assuming that's something waterboard. Don't quite know what waterboard it would be, not being local. It was along here somewhere where the Garstang and Not End Railway crossed the canal. I'm not too sure what remains of the bridge, whether there are abutments left or not. As we go along, we might see something. Is Sally doing some filming? 
I think I may have seen ahead a railway abutment, but I can't be sure. I think we are now just coming up to the abutments, but I'm not, still not sure. I can see something of brick with like a concrete capping. It does seem to be at the point where the railway would have crossed. I'll see if I can get you a better shot. The arrow shows the direction of our travel. This is the other side we're looking at now. We're passing the point now where the railway crossed the canal. We're coming up to an entrance to the marina. So we are on the spot where the railway did cross all those years ago. There's a wide beam work boat here. Very rare for me to see those. It's called Chewett Field. Having said just now that we haven't seen many boats on the move, <laughs> it suddenly got very busy. There was a heron in the bridge hole. I did try and film it, but I'm not really sure exactly what I got. And here he is again. I see you. I don't think I ever appreciated how many cruiser style boats we were going to meet. <laughs> there are loads and loads of them, a lot more than narrow boats I would say. And I don't think that's surprising really, given that the Lancaster Canal is not connected to the network. I'm just passing another cruiser boat here. Oh.
Is there anything you fancy, Sally? One of these uh, plastic boats? You don't think that's good value? Oh my goodness me! Shall we take this moon? I think this mooring definitely has seen better days. I think the farmer needs to get his uh, workers responsible. To get his finger out. It's we haven't passed a moving boat for a long while. They seem to come more scarce the further north we go. I'm sure that will change when we pass through Lancaster. <laughs> That won't be today, of course. That's a caracraft, sort of version between a caravan and a boat. And am I right in thinking it has wheels? Yeah, it can go on road, can't it? In water. I'm told this is a wilderness. This is a towable boat. Hey? Is it a wilderness? Towable, yeah, beaver. A truck. So it's not a wilderness. Yeah, wilderness beaver. Wilderness beaver. There you go, look, this is it. Oh, yeah. Well spotted. That's what I've been looking at. Did I tell you I sold them for 25 grand? We're thinking of mooring now any time in the next mile or two. We want to moor before the Glasson branch which shoots off on our left. We won't be going down that branch. There are locks there. I think it's six or seven. Six, I think. The Crabtree Narrowboat Company don't allow our boats to go down there. And I think that's a good decision, really, <laughs> because there are various problems with the locks there, low water levels, that sort of thing. So we're looking to moor up Ahead of me, we're on a sort of dead straight, and there's no sign of any mooring. But I think when we find something, we'll pull over. It's approaching six o'clock now, so we've had a good day. It's been great fun. Look at that sky. Been like that all day. Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> That's bridge seventy nine, we've just gone under. Looks like we're coming into a wooded area. Them, isn't there? Mm. We're just coming up to a winding hole on our right. You can see here the canal widens out. Very shortly we're going to be mooring up, we're just coming up to bridge 84. This is bridge 84, quite an ornate bridge because it leads to LL El Hall is it? LL El Hall, yeah. It's actually LL El Grange. It's quite a large estate, I believe. Twin Tower Mansion. Oh. 
So this is where we've moored up. Sally had a bit of a ride in the front here earlier. <laughs> We're just in front of Bridge 85. We're on quite a long straight, which was very sunnyless. <laughs> but ahead we saw some sun, so we've come forward. So we are enjoying not just the sun, but there's also a picnic table behind <laughs> me, which <laughs> we may or may not make use of. We've been cruising now for about three and a half hours. I had hoped we'd do it in about three hours. We've done a lot of slowing down to pass moored boats. Since I last spoke to you and said not many boats had passed us, I don't think any more did. We've not seen a boat, certainly in the last hour or hour and a half. It's gone seven o'clock. We obviously do get tired on deck. It's a hot day. We're gonna have a drink and something to eat and we'll catch up with you later. I can't say when that will be. <laughs> it may well be tomorrow, it may be later. Ahead of us is actually a bridge called a double bridge. And I think it's two bridges side by side. There were two farmers that couldn't agree on anything and they built, instead of building a single bridge, they built two bridges side by side. And we will try and have a look at that. So that's it for now. <laughs> Catch up sometime. <laughs> Come on, walk on your paw. Come on, Reggie, see if you can walk. Come on, I'll come with you. Come on. He's a good chap. Come on, boy. Come on. He doesn't want to put that right foot forward. Come on, try and walk. Good boy. Good lad. Reggie's got a problem with his right leg. Not sure if it's actually the leg or the paw. When you touch it, he's not very happy. <laughs> Even the slightest brush and he withdraws it very quickly. In the next episode, we'll take a look at the Glasson branch and cruise on to Lancaster. Meanwhile, many thanks for watching. Take the utmost care in whatever you're doing. Until next time, bye for now.